Okay. So after now studying some of the properties of your uh, waveforms, uh, we now go further or we now take some steps further in order to um, scrutinize uh, some of these properties. Okay. So some of the more uh, deeper and um, more informative properties and characteristics of our waveforms by uh, using one mathematical tool that we have, which is the Fourier transform and uh, the Fourier transform, in which uh, the output that we will be expecting uh, would be what we call the spectra. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, for waveforms, uh, for waveforms of the sinusoidal types, okay, if our waveform is a, if a sinusoidal type, okay. We know that we can find the frequency of the waveform by evaluating uh, the reciprocal of the periodicity, okay? Uh, the reciprocal of the period periodicity T0, okay? And that is the frequency is the rate of occurrence of the sinusoidal uh, wave shape. That is the rate of uh, how uh, your cycles are being repeated, okay? Now, uh, non-sinusoidal wave shapes have more than one frequency. Uh, we, we, we consider this uh, no, this uh, non-sinusoidal waveforms to be uh, what we call complex uh, waveforms. Okay? And complex waveforms uh, consist of more than uh, more than one um, one uh, frequency. So in most practical applications, okay, uh, the, the waveform is not periodic, okay? And as we have said, uh, true periodic waveforms only, only exist in, you know, in theory, okay? We don't really have a, uh, a true technically uh, periodic waveform in, uh, in practice, okay? So... Since uh, we don't have that one, okay, or uh, in, most practical, uh, in most practical applications, the waveform is not periodic, uh, we, we will not have any periodicity to compute to calculate the frequency from. Okay? But uh, we still have to find okay, the frequencies of a waveform that is non-periodic. Okay? Even if okay, um, the, we, have, you know, we have a theory uh, that, um, that any, you know, that any waveform can actually be broken down into um, periodic waveforms. Okay, we have that. Uh, no, we have that uh, theory. Okay, which we will uh, no, we will explore through the Fourier transform. Okay, so we will we, we, we are interested to find the, wave, the, the the frequencies of a waveform that is not period that is non-periodic. Okay, so the Fourier transform. Okay, is a general method that finds the sinusoidal type components and the frequencies contained therein in a waveform. Okay. Um, if, you, if, you, if you might have been wondering, um, uh, what is the difference between, ano, what was the difference between, uh, because we, we, ha we, we have already, uh, we, have, ano, we have already covered, or you have already studied, uh, probably have already studied this, ano, this topic in, ano, in, another, ano, in another course, like for example, in, uh, advanced engineering mathematics or in signal processing okay um and you might uh, and it it would be worthwhile to recall the difference okay or where do we use fourier series and fourier transform uh where do you well, when do we use fourier series and when do we use uh fourier transform as a tool Okay, mind you that both uh, tools, okay, return uh, the spectrum or uh, both, okay, both uh, return the spectrum of a waveform, okay, or of a function, okay, or of a signal, okay, so both of them return the, the spectrum of a waveform or a function of a, or a function or a signal, okay. Um, Fourier series is used for uh, continuous time uh, periodic signals or periodic waveforms. 
or periodic functions. Okay? We only use them for continuous time periodic waveforms. Okay? Um, uh, no, let's remove the qualifier continuous time. Either the continuous time or discrete time. Okay? As long as, this, uh, as long as the waveform is periodic, whether it's continuous or discrete time, you can actually use periodic series for that. Uh, Fourier series for that. Okay. While uh, we use uh, Fourier transform, or Fourier transform is used for non-periodic waveforms. Okay. So th th this is uh, no, this is uh, the the fundamental difference between the two. Okay. So if we're dealing with uh, no, non-periodic waveforms, okay, we will be using Fourier transform. And if we're dealing with uh, periodic waveforms, we will be dealing with Fourier series. Okay. So, but again, uh, the result of using uh, the tools or these tools into your waveform is that both of them would return the spectrum of uh, your omega of your waveform or of your signal. Now, again, what is a spectrum? Spectrum uh, contains the amplitudes of uh, the frequencies or frequency components of your signal, of your waveform or of your signal. Okay, so um, we can, you know, we can, uh, since an uh, spectrum may be, you know, maybe a complex, you know, maybe a complex number. Okay. So we can, uh, we can talk about uh, the real, since the spectrum is uh, complex, uh, remember that your spectrum is, uh, is a complex number or is a complex function. Okay. Uh, we can, uh, we can um, interpret the spectrum in terms of its real and imaginary components. Okay. Components. Or in a more, ano, in a more practical, ano, in a more practical sense, we can uh, analyze the spectrum, the complex spectrum of a waveform, uh, in terms of its uh, magnitude and uh, phase uh, components. Okay, so the, the, that's a quick review of what you have, ano, what you might have learned so far about this thing. Okay, so what we will do here is uh, we will uh, we will simply go back. Okay, we will simply study again uh, Fourier transform. Okay, and it might give you uh, a more uh, it might give you a more um, uh, more perspective on the idea of the Fourier transform. Okay, so the Fourier transform okay of a waveform is uh, given by this integral. Okay, so um, again, uh, may I remind you that this integral is given in uh, is given differently in different books. Okay, so um, there are no, there are books that um, that normalizes this to uh, to the value of one over square root of two pi. Okay, there are some that uh, normalizes this in, in terms of one over two pi. Okay, and so on. Okay, so we will use uh, or we will, uh, we will uh, use the integral okay, that is uh, being given currently in our material. So in this case, we will have your Fourier transform to be uh, or to be computed using this integral. Okay. Now, um, we will designate now uh, the the script F operator. Okay. Or simply just simply the, the script F operator. Okay. as ano as your uh, Fourier series uh, I mean Fourier transform operator okay so this one denotes the Fourier transform of a function okay and f okay is the frequency parameter okay with unit of hertz okay so here we will be ano, we will be uh, transforming okay uh, the, the 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 function okay the function uh, wt okay which is a time domain function okay, into okay, WF, okay, which is now a frequency 
doming function. Okay? So, which means, um, just like uh, all other transforms that you have learned so far, okay, like the plus transform, which transforms your function from time domain to S domain, or your Z transform from, uh, from time domain to Z domain, okay, uh, we transform, again, transforms your, uh, your function from one domain, which is time domain, to the frequency domain. Uh, now, um, there are two, uh, no? there are two um, independent, uh, uh, there are two independent variables that are used under the frequency domain. Okay? There are two independent variables that are used under the frequency domain. So one is F, which is uh, mostly what we will use. But sometimes, instead of actually using F, we will use omega. Okay? For uh, 2 pi F. Okay? So for convenience, we will sometimes use omega instead of, uh, of F. And the relationship between the two is uh, what we know, okay, what we what, what is uh, have known between the uh, with the relationship between them, okay, which is this one, okay. So uh, we recall that uh, when we evaluate definite integrals with uh, infinity in the limits, okay, uh, we uh, no, we instead evaluate the this limit, okay. This limit expression instead. Okay, so this is what uh, what I'm talking about earlier. Now, uh, instead of actually having f, okay, as your ano, as your uh, independent variable, okay, we instead use the angular frequency parameter omega as your independent variable. So instead of having w f as your transform, uh, we will have w omega as your transform. Okay, so. Uh, WF here is called a two-sided spectrum of WT of our waveform, okay? Because both positive and negative compo uh, frequency components are obtained, okay? So um, we have, ano, we will learn, okay, that uh, your frequency components, okay, consists of positive and negative frequencies, okay? So mathematically, you have, ano, you have. Uh, you have positive and negative components, okay? So, <clears throat> so we will, uh, we will uh, obtain the, the two frequency components, okay? So, we will be able to, uh, we will be able to express the, expect, the, the spectrum, okay, in terms of these positive, uh, positive and negative frequency components. Uh, it should be clear that the spectrum of a voltage or current waveform is obtained by a mathematical calculation and it and that it does not appear physically in an actual circuit okay so which means that ano which means that um if we are ano kung kung nag-evaluate tayo ng ano kung nag-evaluate tayo ng um, spectrum ng um uh, waveform um uh, we're not actually ano we're not actually um measuring it okay or it's not actually uh, on the circuit Okay, it's not actually on the circuit. Okay, um, on the circuit uh, is uh, the uh, no, the the time domain waveform. Okay, what is uh, on the uh, no, what is on the uh, what what passes on on your on your circuit? Okay, is uh, the uh, no, the time domain waveform. Okay, the spectrum is the implication or is a, is a characteristic of that. Ano, of that time domain waveform that is calculated or that is measured. Uh, I mean, that is, uh, yeah, that is calculated from the time domain uh, waveform. Okay? So, it does not appear physically. Okay? Uh, the quantity F is just a parameter that determines which point of the spectral function is to be evaluated. So, there. Now, the Fourier transform is used to find the frequencies in WT. Okay, so one chooses some value of F, say F0, and evaluates uh, the magnitude of W F0. Okay, if uh, this quantity, okay, if this quantity, if this quantity is not zero, okay, then the frequency F0 is present in the waveform. So, ibig sabihin, kapag, ka, kapag ka si, ano, kapag ka, 
in-evaluate natin yung magnitude ng uh, spectrum. Okay. We, we, we will call, ano, we will call this, ano, this function. Okay. Ay, sorry. This is called the waveform or this is called a waveform. Or a, uh, yeah, or a waveform. Either a signal or a noise. Okay. Or whatever. Um, this is its, ano, this is its uh, what we call spectrum. Okay. So if we choose a certain value of uh, frequency, say uh, yun nga, f of zero, and if we evaluate the magnitude of the spectrum at that frequency, and we knew that this is non-zero, okay. Uh, our ano, our uh, our calculation led us to the implication that uh the waveform the your your waveform has a frequency component at f of zero so yun yung ano natin, interpretation natin that once we see that this is non zero okay so, in general, uh, the Fourier uh, transform integral is evaluated again and again for all possible values of f over the range of positive, uh, over the range of negative infinity to positive infinity to find all of the frequencies in uh, omega t. Okay? So, which means, uh, uh, parang magaan tayo. Uh, Magpa-perform tayo ng tinatawag nating ano, frequency sweep. Okay. Magpe-perform tayo ng tawag ng frequency sweep. We will attempt we will attempt to ano to uh, plug in okay or we will attempt to ano to see w uh, which frequencies uh, are non-zero. Okay. Doon sa ating uh, integral. Okay. So those non-zero frequencies would be ano would be uh, present as frequency components of your uh, waveform. And those zero uh, frequency uh, and so in those um, frequencies that results to zero magnitude means they are not present in the uh, waveform. Okay. So um, direct evaluation of the Fourier transform integral can be difficult. Okay. So a list of alternative evaluation techniques is helpful. Okay. Uh, Although most of the time, or, or, or at the start, we will, we will still have to really, you know, really resort to direct integration. Okay. So, but um, later on, we will be able to, you know, to use the table of Fourier transforms uh, or Laplace transforms if, uh, because the, the, these two, the Fourier transforms and Laplace transforms are actually related. Okay. And at the same time, uh, that you can use your, ano, your table of uh, Fourier transforms, you can also use your Fourier transform theorems. Okay, or uh, shall we say uh, Fourier transform properties. Just like what you, ano, what you have done with uh, your uh, Laplace transform properties. Okay. Um, we may be able to, ano, to use superposition to break the problem into two or more simple simpler problems okay uh, differentiation or integration of uh, your uh, waveform okay now um in in a you know, in a later you know, in a later case okay where we will be now focus we will focus ourselves now more on you know, more on the um interpretation and analysis of the spectrum uh, we will be actually having the numerical or symbolic integration of uh, the Fourier integral via uh, MATLAB and much a much better method the use of fast Fourier transform okay via uh, MATLAB's FFT functions okay so kapag ka ang ano kapag ka ang concentration na natin is more of the ano the interpretation na of ano of uh, the the spectrum of your uh, waveform okay and naintindihan na nating mabuti kung 
ano yung kung paano uh, ini-expose or inililitaw ng uh, ini-expose or inililitaw ng uh, ng fully transforming nyo yung um, spectrum ng inyong waveform at ano yung mga mababasa natin sa kanya. Then, uh, we may, ano, we may be uh, dealing more or we will be getting the, ano, the, the transform more using, ano, using uh, computer-aided tools instead of actually manual, uh, manually computing them every time. Okay. So, yun. Now, um, from equation 21, the which is the integral uh which is the Fourier transform integral since uh the you know this factor we call this the kernel of transformation okay for every you know for every transform techniques that you have studied uh there is this you know, there is this uh factor within the integral or within the summation okay that is you know, that um that actually performs the transformation part. Okay. So, we call that the kernel of transformation. For example, in Laplace form, that kernel of transformation is a raised to negative st. Okay. So, in this case, uh, that kernel of transformation for your, um, um, uh, for your, uh, for your, uh, Fourier transform is a raised to, neg uh, a raised to negative j 2 pi ft. Okay. And we take note that this, function or this factor is complex okay so therefore as i said before uh the spectrum would also be a complex function of frequency okay so in such case um if the spectrum is a complex function then we may decompose okay we may decompose the complex function into two real functions x and y okay such that uh we can write uh, no, we can write the components in the following manner okay so which is identical to writing a complex number in terms of uh, pairs of real numbers that can be plotted in a two dimensional uh, partition coordinate system ang tawag niyo dito sa ano natin sa lesson natin sa advanced math is rectangular form okay okay so we also call this ano we also call this um form as the quadrature form okay so we'll explain uh, 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 in, a, in a later analysis part uh we will it will be explained why it is called a quadrature form okay so that's one um similarly um since again uh 21 results in a complex spectrum okay it can be written in terms of a polar coordinate system okay where um there are two uh, real functions okay uh, that would now denote the ma the magnitude and the phase of your spectrum so we will write that in terms of this one okay now the relationship between uh, these two okay this form the quadrature form okay and the uh, um polar form we, we this is actually in polar form Okay. Um, is that uh, the magnitude of your spectrum is uh, the square root of the squares of your uh, real and imaginary components okay. while uh, the face of your spectrum okay, uh, is uh, the arctangent of uh, the ratio y over x okay so again uh, this is ano 23 denotes the polar form of your uh, spectrum okay so to determine uh, whether certain frequency components are present okay so to determine uh, whether certain frequency components are present okay so one would examine okay the magnitude of spectrum. So, yun na actually yung pinaka-importante dun sa, ano, sa hinahanap natin, the magnitude of spectrum. Okay? That is in practice. Okay? So, the first thing that, ano, that engineers or that analysts uh, of, uh, of, of uh, waveforms is to look into the magnitude spectrum 
of your waveform. Okay. Uh, and this is what we loose, actually loosely call as the spectrum. Okay. So sometimes uh, engineers uh, use the term spectrum to actually refer to the magnitude spectrum. Although in our case, in our discussion, uh, I would be very specific in, ano, in that regard. Okay. So when I say spectrum, it actually refers to everything. Okay. So your spectrum uh, may actually refer to the, uh, the spectrum in polar form. Which uh, gives your, ano, your magnitude spectrum, okay, and your, uh, and your phase spectrum, spec, yeah, and then or it also refers, uh, it, it, uh, the, sp the spectrum that I am referring to may also be referring to, uh, the spectrum in quadrature form, okay, which gives the, you know, the, the spectrum, okay, in. Uh, in its uh, real components and imaginary components. Basta pag sinabi kong spectrum, that's just simply the transform. So pag transform natin si, ano, si, if we take the transform of your waveform, okay, which results to, ano, which results to uh, yours there. So ito yung tawag natin yung spectrum. That's, ano, that's F, ah. And so, may hirap i-differentiate ni. Okay. So, when you say spectrum, it's a, it's a transform of the waveform. Okay. So, now the spectrum may, per, the spectrum, okay, this one, okay, may pertain to, when it's written in polar form, may pertain to the magnitude and the phase spectrum. Okay, or when it's written in quadrature form, may, may refer to its uh, real component or and the imaginary component. Okay, so don't be specific either. Okay, now um, the time domain waveform or the time waveform may be calculated from the spectrum by using the in inverse Fourier transform. Okay, so this is now the formula. Okay, or the integral that gives you the inverse Fourier transform okay so um this uh this integral actually synthesizes uh your waveform from the from its frequency component so given the frequency components that are present in your waveform uh you can construct uh the waveform now uh using this integral okay so we say that the functions wt and WF, the waveform, the spectrum, okay? So this is the waveform. This is the spectrum. Okay. So these two are said to constitute a Fourier transform pair. Okay. So another, uh, uh, another um, term that we will use for the functions uh, WT and WF would be the time domain waveform or description, okay, and WF to be the frequency domain des description. Pero again, sa pinakamadaling sabi, I'll, I'll simply use waveform for WT at spectrum para sa WF. Okay, so we, you know, we will denote the time domain function, okay, usually by a lowercase letter, and the frequency domain function by an uppercase letter as the practice that we will we are ano, we are uh, doing sa Laplace transform okay so in the Laplace transform in our study of Laplace transform pagka time domain yung function natin we use the lowercase letter to pertain to its uh, <coughs> to pertain to its ano to pertain to its uh, <clears throat> to, to, to pertain to its uh, time domain uh, function while we use the uppercase letter to pertain to the Laplace transform of that function. Okay? So, we, you know, we use this, you know, this notation, the double arrow notation, okay, to 
uh, to denote that WT and, and WF are what we call transform pairs. So kapag itong dalawa to are what we call transform pairs. Okay, if we, if these two are transform pairs, we can actually uh, write them in this kind in this in this notation. Okay, we don't use equal sign on that ano, on that uh, on that notation because th those two functions are not equal. Okay, we so we and we emphasize that those two functions are not equal. Okay, they are just transforms of each other. Okay, so uh, the waveform WT okay is Puyay transformable. Okay. So, which means that, uh, <clears throat> when you say Puyay transformable, it means that uh, you can, ano, you can uh, use the uh, the Puyay transform integral in 21. Okay. Um, if it satisfies both the Richlet, uh, what we call the Richlet conditions. Okay. So, what are those Dirichlet conditions? So, over any time interval of finite width, the function WT is single valued, okay, with a finite number of maxima and minima, and the number of discontinuities, if any, is finite. Okay. So, which means that, ano, that, uh, it's a function, number one, okay, the function is single valued. Okay, uh, we can count the number of maxima and minima, which means that uh, your your oh, within a, within a certain ano, within a certain interval, uh, your function can go as high as possible and as low as possible in a finite number of times. Okay, and can go in as many discontinuity, okay, as uh, as possible, but of finite number. Okay. So, that's one condition. Okay. The second condition um, is that the function uh, WT is absolutely integrable. Okay. That is, we can um, remember that, you know, that 21 is uh, is a definite integral. Okay. Actually, it's, a, it's an improper integral. Okay. That has limits from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Okay. So, in that case, there is ano there is a special requirement for your waveform in order for you to come up with a finite uh, finite integral for this ano for for this uh for this integral okay so therefore kaya kailangan natin yung uh, uh it is ano it is uh, sufficient that uh, we say that uh or it is sufficient that we require the function to be absolutely integrable so that we can say that uh, the waveform is Fourier transformable, okay? And although these conditions are sufficient, okay, they are actually not necessary, okay? Which means that there are, ano, there are some waveforms that uh, do not satisfy the, the Dirichlet condition, okay? But, there, but we can find actually a uh, Fourier transform, okay? So th actually these two, okay? Uh, the, these two, ano, these two uh, conditions are actually consistent with uh, the definition or with the conditions that make a that make up a practical uh, waveform. If you recall this from ano, from lesson uh, three point one, wherein uh, we enumerated the um, conditions that um, make or that uh, is required for a waveform to be physically realizable. Okay? So, these uh, two, okay, are actually consistent with those conditions. Okay? So, therefore, it means that all practical signals, so all physically realizable signals should have a Fourier transport. Okay? So, but not all of them, okay, not all of them are actually, you know, are not actually, not all physically realizable signals Okay, are actually consistent with this definition. Okay, but still, since these are practical, these are practically realizable signals. Okay, um, they still have um, Fourier transform. Okay, now a weaker sufficient condition. Okay, uh, 
for your Fourier transform to exist is that the normalized energy uh, contained in the waveform is finite. Okay, so if you can remember, uh, we discussed in the previous lesson energy signals and uh, energy waveforms and uh, power waveforms. Okay, so we learned how to compute the energy and power of a waveform. So if a signal or if a waveform is considered to be energy waveform, okay, um, it can or it has a Fourier transform. Okay, so if again, uh, so again, the condition is the, the condition is that uh, the you know, the 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 waveform must be an energy waveform. That means it has a finite energy. Yon. So it is yung sabi ng condition na to. It has a finite energy. Okay. And again, as we said, all physically realizable signals are energy signals. Okay. So therefore, uh, all uh, physically realizable waveforms should have uh, Fourier transform. Okay. So let's have an example. So let um, WT be, be a decaying exponential pulse. Okay. Okay. That is switched on at T equals zero. Okay, so that is uh, your waveform is e raised to negative t, e raised to negative t for uh, positive time, and zero for negative time. Okay, so using the Fourier integral of twenty one, okay, uh, we will uh, no, we will determine the Fourier transform of this uh, waveform. So we will directly evaluate. Okay, we will use direct evaluation of. Uh, the Fourier integral to find the Fourier transform of this uh, decaying exponential pulse. Okay, so we we call this waveform now a decaying uh, exponential uh, pulse. Okay, so uh, now um, so we you know we this is the, uh, the integral, uh, the Fourier integral. Okay. Now we replace now uh, this function or this factor with our um, with our given waveform. But take note, okay, take note that since your waveform is a zero for negative values of t, okay, it would then allow you, okay, it would then allow you to change the limits of your integral, okay. From negative infinity to, infi to positive infinity into zero. So, pwede natin gawin yung lower limit ng integral ninyo na maging zero. Since your integral is zero naman, okay, is zero for uh, negative values of your way for, uh, of your time. Okay? So, which means from zero now, okay, from here, from zero to positive infinity, okay, your uh, omega, uh, your, uh, your uh, waveform okay, takes the value of e raised to t. Okay, so we have this one. Now, um, simplifying this, okay, since these two have the same, ano, have the same base, okay, we will have the following uh, simplified uh, expression. Okay. Now, uh, as we carry out the integration, okay, so we take note that uh, this negative 1 plus j2 pi f are constants in this case okay uh, we will have to know uh, we will have to uh, we will have to make them as uh, or we will have to apply them as balance balance factors okay so you would have this as your factor now ito to negative uh, 1 over 1 plus j2 pi f okay and then the integral of e raised to 80 Okay, is simply e raised to 80. Okay, and then we'll have the limits from uh, t equals 0 to t equals infinity. Okay, now substituting these limits, okay, uh, pag itong t equals infinity, ang nilagay natin dito, this would result to e raised to negative infinity or e raised to a very negative, very high negative number, which is practically 0. Okay. And when we substitute now this lower limit, okay, uh, to uh, to uh, here, okay, you would now have um, e raised to zero, or essentially equal to one, 
So you now have this as 0 minus 1 or negative 1. So negative 1 times this thing gives you the uh, spectrum as this one. Okay? So we take note now that we have our uh, first, um, or we have now obtained our first Fourier transform pair. Okay? And we observe that, again, your Fourier transform uh, WF okay, is a complex function. Okay, so we see that this is a complex function. So if that is a complex function, okay, we can express that in terms of the um, of quadrature functions uh, x and f, its real and imaginary components. Okay, if we rationalize this one, if we rationalize the spectrum. Okay. So, uh, rationalize means you multiply that with the, no? you multiply that with uh, the, uh, you multiply the numerator and the denominator with the conjugate of the denominator so that you can rationalize the denominator, okay, so, which results to this expression, okay, which now gives you this, okay, as the, uh, as the real component, okay, the real component of your spectrum, while the other one, the negative 2 pi f over 1 plus 2 pi f squared, this one, as the imaginary component of your um, spectrum. So, ito yun, this one and this one. Okay. Then, we can also determine uh, the magnitude spectrum. Okay, uh, of your ano, of your waveform, which we can obtain from the real and imaginary components that we have already obtained. Okay, uh, so by uh, using uh, this formula, okay, so we will have the square root of one of the x, okay, and the y. Okay, we will uh, that would simplify to uh, this. Okay. So we take note that ano, we take note that they have the same denominator. So we, I can simply add them. Okay. Uh, and that um, since the denominator becomes squared, okay, the denominator becomes squared. Uh, I can uh, uh, I can ano, I can uh, actually I can have this as uh, since these two are of the same factor, but the denominator one is squared. I can have this cancelled and then cancel one of the factors of this. So that should give me this as the um, as the simplified form of that one. Okay. While the phase spectrum uh, would be given as the arc tangent of the ratio of y and x. Okay. So since uh, this is the, their ratio and the denominators here are the same. So this is simply... Um, negative 2 pi f, okay, or arc tangent of negative 2 pi f, or simply negative arc tangent of 2 pi f. So, we observe that for positive f, okay, the range of the phase function is determined to be uh, negative 90 degrees to 0. Okay? Um, why do, wh how can we, uh, how can we say that this is a uh, negative 90 degrees to 0? Um, Take note that your ano, your uh, x, your real component, okay, and your imaginary component is uh, here positive, okay, and negative for your y. So which means that uh the choice spectrum, okay, or the angle of your spectrum would be found somewhere here. Positive x and negative y. Okay, and since this is 0 degrees and this is negative 90 degrees, okay, we, we find that the phase would be in between these two. Okay, so that is how we identify this, ano, this uh, range. Okay. So, you can actually use MATLAB, okay, 
uh, you can actually uh, use MATLAB in order to do those symbolic operations. Okay. So here, uh, we use the, the, the commands. Okay. We use the commands to, uh, to uh, the symbolic commands in order to evaluate uh, the integral. Okay. So ito yun. This is where we uh, use uh, symbolic integration okay, of your uh, symbolic integration of your uh, waveform. Okay. Uh, and here, although um, we have you know, we have defined pala first your uh, waveform using uh, the piecewise function of your uh, of your symbolic MATLAB. Okay. Uh, which would actually result in this ano, in this expression. Okay. It would result in this expression. Okay. Now, here, since we will be, you know, we will be asked to evaluate the limit okay, of this expression as your t approaches infinity. And practically, when t approaches infinity, this expression becomes zero. Okay. okay. As well as this one, actually. This also becomes zero. Okay. Essentially, this numerator here becomes zero. And therefore, this entire first term becomes zero, leaving you out with this one as the value or the expression for your spectrum. Okay. So I have just, here I, ha I have just written this uh, this uh, first term in uh, in in the book form of the expression okay which will let you see now that it actually really approaches or uh, evaluates us here okay so thus we will have this as the following uh, okay now um if we actually use these commands okay if we actually uh, use these commands we will be able to the right uh, your spectrum into its quadrature form okay here okay and then um using this and this okay rewrites your um expression okay into magnitude phase form so which gives you this and this Okay. Now let's try to plot uh, the you know, the time domain waveform. Okay. And uh, the functions obtained from the Fourier transform. So plot natin yung time domain waveform at saka yung um, spectrum. Okay. So again, your time domain waveform is a decaying uh, exponential pulse. Okay, which is switched on at t equals 0. So that is at t less than zero or at negative time, okay, the value of your waveform is zero. Okay. And uh, at positive t when uh, after ano, after switching your uh, your uh, decaying exponential pulse on, okay, the value of your waveform is e raised to negative t. So at yon. Okay, so we see that ano, that at negative time, okay, the value of your signal is zero, and then at positive time, starting at t or at t greater than zero, okay, your function takes the value or assumes the value of e raised to negative t. Okay, now if you plot the quadrature functions, okay, from ano, from since uh. The quadrature functions are now functions of f. Okay. So these are now functions in frequencies. Okay. The quadrature functions are now functions in uh, in of frequencies. So therefore, yung magiging ano natin dito, x axis natin dito. Now, instead of time, katulad nito, is now in f. Okay, it's now in f. So we will, I know, we will show uh, how the quadrature function plots, okay, between the frequencies negative 20 to positive 20 hertz. And again, 
yung pre- yung concept of negative frequency here is that uh, in theory all signals would have a negative frequency okay but in uh, in practice uh, kino-consider lang natin yung positive frequencies natin okay so you see that ano that uh, most of the ano in for for ano for frequencies from negative 20 up to positive 20 hertz yung value ng frequency niyo okay is almost zero okay meron lang siyang value starting at this ano at this very small frequencies pero baka mga 1 or 2 hertz na ito okay in fact uh, i might have ano i might have um parang na over ano natin yung ano na over uh, uh, ano ko dito yung um uh, yung plotting i could have shortened yung interval ng frequencies that i have used to plot this in order to see uh, the real uh, frequency components of your ano pero still um it's also good to um plot the the ano the frequencies this way so that again you can see na not all frequencies would have a a non zero value okay so again uh, so, in ano in uh, this xf okay this is your uh, real component okay this is the real the real component of your ano of your uh, waveform or the real spectrum real component of your spectrum la okay not real component of your waveform ha? real component of the spectrum okay while this is the imaginary component of your spectrum so again uh, most of them are zero okay until something this point at this point okay so ayan. and then beyond that um in between those uh non-zero siya. okay with the peak okay here with the peak here goes around at uh the zero frequency while here uh the peak goes at a value more or less uh very close to zero pero non zero not, not 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 at the zero frequency itself okay now we also show that for your ano for your magnitude and phase spectrum so we see na yung ano yung ating um spect- spectrum okay is non zero or is zero for this uh frequencies okay and non zero siya in between this Okay, with a peak around uh, f equals 0. Okay? And the phase spectrum is this one. Now, here the phase here is given in uh, yeah, in degrees. Okay? Although, feeling ko baka hindi degrees ito. Uh, I feel like this is uh, in regions pa. Baka hindi ko siya na-convert. Okay? Anyway, um, you can know uh, you can uh, see how this um, magnitude and phase functions, okay, as well as the okay, as well as the you know, ah, sorry, uh, I'm not referring to that discussion. Okay, so these are the, the magnitude and phase spectrum. Okay, this is the magnitude spectrum, the phase spectrum of your, ano, of your uh, waveform. While this is the quadrature function y, the, the, the imaginary quadrature function, and this is the real quadrature function okay, of your uh, spectrum. Okay, and uh, all of this, okay, how are these obtained? How are these, ano, how, are, how, how do you get the plot? Okay, can uh, be, you know, the... Uh, or the commands in MATLAB uh, so that uh, you can ano, you can plot and uh, you can uh, compute and plot them okay you can compute this okay symbolically compute this and then plot these things okay can be you know, can be uh, found on the script uh, example t0305.m which is provided to you So there. Now, 
let us ano, let us proceed in the discussion of uh, the properties of your Fourier transform. Okay. Um, so properties of your Fourier transform. Okay. Many useful and interesting theorems follow from the definition of the spectrum as given by equation 21. Okay. One particular interest is a consequence of working with real forms. Okay. In any physical circuit that can be built, uh, the voltage or current wave forms are real functions okay, of time. Okay. So remember that, uh, again, uh, physical uh, when you have a waveform that is running uh, in a physical circuit, okay, uh, the voltage or current waveforms that are there okay, are real functions. Okay. They are not complex functions. Okay. So... So one property that we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, that is useful in our discussion of uh, the spectrum is the spectral sp symmetry of real signals. Okay. So that is if your waveform is real and it is always when we are talking about practical signals. Okay. Uh, then um, we can have uh, the equation twenty six. Okay. So this means that the values of um, your spectrum for negative f, okay, is the complex conjugate of um, your spectrum. Okay. Now for real, ano, for for uh, real signals, okay, for real signals, okay, um, it would, ano, it would imply that the magnitude spectrum is even symmetrical. Okay, lagi yan. It means, uh, kapag, ano, kapag meron tayong real signal, okay, the magnitude uh, spectrum must be even symmetrical. Okay? And the phase function must be odd symmetrical. Okay? So, yun yung lagi nating tatandaan ngayon dito. Okay? So, whenever we are, ano, whenever we are, um, computing for or obtaining the, the spectrum of a real waveform, okay, of a real valued waveform, um, the magnitude spectrum must always be even symmetrical, okay, while the phase function must always be odd symmet symmetrical. Okay. Uh, makikita yun dito, one example of which is this one. Yan, ito. Makikita nyo that this is even symmetrical, okay, Pag even symmetrical, what is, uh, kung ito yung ano, reference ng symmetry natin, that is, yung f equals 0, yung, yung reference of symmetry natin. Okay. Pag even symmetrical siya, um, what is on the left of f equals 0 is also on its right. Okay. So, reflection ng left, yung nasa right. Kapag ka even symmetrical. While, uh, dito naman, negative naman yung ano, yung nasa kabila. Okay. So, this is uh, even symmetrical. An example of an even symmetrical uh, spectrum. Ito naman yung example ng odd symmetrical spectrum. Okay. So, yun. Now, second ano, second um, thing uh, or second property that we, uh, that we will have to know about your ano is uh, the possible theorem and uh, the energy spectral density. Okay. So here, um, the possible theorem okay, states that um, if we, you know, if we have uh, two signals that are to, you know, to be multiplied, okay, and one of them is the conjugate of the other one, assuming that uh, the two, the, the, the signals are, you know, are complex. Okay. Then, uh, it's, uh, it, we can also perform the same uh, operation on their uh, spectrums, or spectra, sorry, on their spectra. Okay. So that is, we can also multiply their spectra and its uh, conjugate. Okay. But the thing is that, if uh, waveform 1 is equal to waveform 2, Okay. If waveform one is equal to waveform two, okay. If you have, ano, if you have a com, if you have a complex number, 
uh, say x1, okay, or x, simply x, okay, and uh, you multiply it to its conjugate, okay, you multiply it to its conjugate, okay, this is simply uh, x squared, that is you simply square the, you know, the, the unconjugated um, complex number, okay, so here, if uh, waveform 1 equals waveform 2, okay, then the Parseval's theorem, okay, would reduce to this, uh, to this, ano, to this uh, statement, okay. Now here, this simply, um, this integral simply computes the energy of your waveform, as we, ano, we recall from the previous discussion. But the second one, the second integral, actually gives, okay, an alternative method, okay, it actually gives an alternative, uh, gives an alternative method for evaluating the energy, okay. Now, that alternative um, method, okay, for evaluating the energy, uh, now involves evaluating the energy in the frequency domain, okay, using the spectrum. Okay, so this now gives us, okay, this all gives us the, what we call the energy spectral density of real waveforms or ESD. Okay, so that is, if we have the spectrum of your, uh, of your waveform, if you have the, if, if you have the, um, if you have the spectrum of your waveform and evaluate this function, that is uh, the magnitude of your spectra, of your spectrum, and then square that uh, that magnitude. Okay. Then we will have this function. Okay. This function now is called the energy spectral density of your uh, waveform. Okay. So so far, no. Um, under the ano, under the frequency domain, ano, frequency domain. Uh, under the frequency domain, you can actually now represent your uh, waveform in three ways. Okay? We have discussed so far three ways of representing your waveform in the frequency domain. Okay? All, all of them are, ano, are uh, called uh, spectrum. Okay? Una, you can represent them in quadrature form. Okay? You can represent them in quadrature form. That is, you express them in terms of its real Okay, and um, the sum of its real and imaginary uh, components. Okay, that's the first way of representing them in uh, in uh, the uh, frequency domain. The other one is uh, the use of uh, no, the use of um, the magnitude, uh, the polar form. Okay, in which uh, you would represent them as magnitude spectrum, okay, uh, and uh, the phase spectrum, okay, so that's the second way, and finally, you could now express them in terms of what we call the energy, then uh, spectra, uh, spectral density, okay, that is the square of the magnitude spectrum okay so these are the three ways by which you can represent so three ways that uh, a waveform can be uh, described in frequency domain okay so so far we have defined these three okay so so we take note that the e that the energy spectral density okay has the units uh joules per hertz okay now um if we add the these components okay so the total normalized energy is given by the area under the est function okay so, which means that if we integrate this, uh, 
if we integrate this uh, EST function from negative infinity up to positive infinity, then we will find the total normalized energy. Okay. Um, we would be able to find a similar uh, function uh, for power vapors, but we will have to suspend the you know, the discussion on that when we you know, when we are at the um, discussion on Fourier series. Okay. So there may be other uh, Fourier transform theorems in addition to Parseval's theorem. Okay. And these theorems are summarized in Table One. So here. Okay, so this uh, table one summarizes the Fourier transform uh, theorems or properties. Okay. So as you will see in the examples that follow, okay, uh, these theorems can greatly simplify the calculations required uh, to solve Fourier transform problems. Okay. Uh, you should be able to study table one and be prepared to use when needed. So after the Fourier transform is evaluated, one should check that it is easy to verify properties of Fourier transform are satisfied. Okay. Otherwise, there is a mistake. Okay. So, ano yung check natin usually? Or ano yung pinakaun natin check? Okay. Ang pinakaun yung check is yung symmetry. Okay. So, um, ang unang yung check is symmetry. So, tatandaan natin again. Okay. Uh, the magnitude function or the magnitude spe spectrum is even symmetrical. Okay. While the phase function is ad symmetrical. Yan ang lagi yung unang check. Okay. Once these two, either of these two is ano, is not satisfied. Um, your uh, answer might be incorrect. Okay. Ch chances are your answers is uh, your your ano, your spectrum is incorrect. Okay. So we also in addition we also see that uh, the spectrum is real, okay, if your um, waveform is an even function, okay, so ibig sabihin, kapag ka, uh, mga classify natin yung waveform natin as an even function, we will expect that it's expect that it that its spectrum is a real is a real function, okay, while uh, if you can classify or you can identify your waveform to be an odd function, okay, you would be able to have your spectrum to be a purely imaginary function. So these are the you know, these are the easy to verify properties of Fourier transform uh, that we can use to check uh, if uh, if the spectrum that you are ano, or you are obtaining okay using uh, the, these properties and the transform pairs okay, is correct or not. Okay. So let us, ano, um, let us um, try to, ano, to have example six. Okay. So now we now have what we call here a damp sinusoid. So a damp sinusoid is actually a a waveform. Okay. That is uh, that results when you multiply a sinusoidal signal to a uh, to an exponential signal, usually a decaying exponential signal. Okay, the thing is that if you multiply your uh, sinusoid to a uh, decaying sinusoidal signal, it results to a uh, sinusoid that decays over time. So, if yung tawag natin decay, uh, this is what, this is the waveform that we call or that we consider a uh, damp uh, sinusoid. Okay, so if instead multi uh, if you multiply your sinusoid to a to a growing exponential, that sinusoid would instead now grow. Okay, we still consider that to be a you know a damp sinusoid, but um, obviously uh, this signal is an impractical signal because later on it will become an infinite uh, valued signal and is therefore uh, unusable. Uh, as ano as a practical signal okay so now we will obtain the ano the uh, spectrum of this waveform okay um but here we will now we will not ano we will not um 
we will not use or we will not resort to direct integration of the Fourier transform integral uh, given in uh, equation 21. Okay. What we will do here is that we will use the results. Okay. Uh, we will use the results of um, example 5. Okay. And then some of the Fourier transform uh, Fourier transform theorems. Okay. So from example 5, recall that we were able to obtain this transform pair. Okay. So um just uh take note, okay, just take note that the uh <clears throat> the difference between this okay this exponential in particular and this exponential is that uh the first exponential is now scaled or the given exponential is now uh scaled by a factor of one over t okay so that is uh if we let um if we let uh g okay as a function uh that denotes your um that denotes this uh this function okay then uh scaling this or scaling your t here okay scaling your t here by the factor one over t gives you this function okay so in that case okay in that case um since there is what we call uh scaling your time variable okay or scale change operation okay that that operation is what we call scale change operation okay so in that case um if you take a good look at table one there is a you know, there is a property okay that is i know that is for that i know that applies to that operation okay that is uh that applies when you scale your time variable okay so we just look, simply look at it, it, it here. Okay. So, entry number 3 of table 1 shows that if uh, the Fourier transform of G of T is G of F, okay, then the Fourier transform of the scale G of P, okay, that is where we will perform now the scale change operation. Okay. Uh, we will now have to scale also or we will now have to modify your um your transform also according to this form okay so if now if you now have uh this uh e raised to t uh, for t positive and zero for t negative uh whose transform is uh 1 over uh, 1 plus j 2 pi f. Tama? Ayan. Kung ito yung original ano natin, original na ating ano, transform pair, okay, and we will have to apply this, okay, then, tingnan natin mabuti ito, okay, ibig sabihin nito, uh, yung uh, transform or yung spectrum, we will have to first multiply this by 1 over 1 over t. Okay? So, ito, i-multiply natin nung scaling factor niya. Okay? e raised to negative t over t uh, for t greater than 0 and 0 for t less than 0. So, ibig sabihin nito, yung ating 1 over 1 plus 2 pi, a uh, j 2 pi f, okay, would have to first be multiplied by 1 over 1 over t. Okay? Kung ano yung pinang-scale natin sa kanya. So, that is 1 over 1 over t. Okay? And then, here, it means that we will have to replace f with f over 1 over t. 
So, ibig sabihin dito, we'll have to replace f here with f over 1 over t. Okay, so, yun. Yun yung gagawin natin. Ire-replace natin yung f with f over 1 over t. Galing dun sa original uh, trans, uh, transform natin. Okay, now, we simplify this expression, okay, which results to this one, uh, to this expression, which now gives you this transform pair. Okay? That gives you now this transform pair. So, ayun. So, that's how we apply yung, ano, that's how we apply yung um, properties nung uh, Fourier transform natin. Okay? And, um, as you can, ano, as you can, uh, as you may recall, this is also how we apply yung uh, properties of our Laplace transform from your uh, advanced math uh, course. Okay? So, that's, ano, that's uh, time scaling or that this, ano, scale change. Okay? Now, next. Um, in the given waveform that we are trying to, ano, to find the spectrum of, okay, uh, we now have to multiply this uh, this thing uh, or this waveform with the sinusoid okay so that is we multiply the exponential function uh, to the sinusoid to this sinusoid uh, when t is positive okay so um, this is covered okay this is covered under ano uh, this is covered under Entry number 6 of table 1. Okay. That is, if you multiply, okay, let's take a look at that one. That is, if you multiply a waveform by a sinusoid, okay, if you multiply a waveform by a sinusoid, okay, and that is called, uh, the operation is called real signal frequency translation, okay, um, that involves now, okay, that that involves now having your um, spectrum shifted by uh, by frequencies plus or minus fc okay so that is uh, we will uh, we will translate the frequencies of your spectrum okay we will translate the frequencies of your spectrum so here Um, okay, here uh, the frequencies of e raised to negative t over t okay, is to be translated uh, by plus or minus fo. Fo is the frequency of t multiply of, of the sinusoid being multiplied to it. Okay, so. Now, now, since uh, to be uh, to be consistent with the uh, no, to be consistent with uh, the form of the function in entry number six of table one, okay? Because yun nakalagay don cosine, okay? That is uh, cosine of uh, cosine of two pi fc uh, theta theta, okay? And uh, the 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 sinusoid that you have to multiply here is sine, okay? Then we will have to ano uh, to rewrite this, okay? this function as a cosine okay using this uh, trigonometric identity okay that is uh, sine of x is cosine of x minus 2 pi okay and uh, rewrite uh, your original waveform as this one okay as this one okay so now writing now your property okay writing now your property or uh, I mean, writing now the spectrum using the property in six. Okay, taking note that uh, your theta here is up negative pi over two. Yung shift dito. Okay, yung shift ng uh, sinusoid niya. Okay, again, uh, that property is um, one half times e raised to uh, negative j uh, theta times the spectrum uh, original spectrum shifted or minus fc okay 
shifted by negative Fc. Okay? Um, plus E raised to negative uh, or positive pala. E raised to positive J theta times your spectrum. Okay? Uh, with your uh, frequency shifted by positive Fc. Yan yung nandun sa ano, sa um, property uh, number 6. Okay? Uh, property 6 nung ano, nung ating Fourier, uh, Fourier transform. Okay? So, starting from the fact that, ano, starting from the fact that uh, you, your WF, okay, your WF is uh, ito, T over um, 1 of uh, 1 plus 2 pi j uh, j 2 pi f t okay so yung f natin dito okay pag i-apply natin siya dito papaitan natin siya ng f minus f0 para dun sa first statement tapos para dito naman papaitan natin siya ng f plus f0 so, that is why you can see it here. Here and here. Okay? Now, this theta, itong theta na to, tsaka itong theta na to, refers to the shift of your sinusoid. Phase shift of your sin of the sinusoid that you multiply to your waveform. Okay? So, if you um, take a good look, uh, the numbers uh, the, uh, the numbers e raised to plus or minus j pi over 2 okay, are actually equal to ito, itong, itong resulting number na to at saka ito they are actually equal to um, plus or minus j okay so yung uh, ito this is a uh, negative j Okay. Ito, positive J ito. Okay. Now, um, but instead of actually negative J and positive J, okay, I, I'll actually use uh, positive 1 over J para dito. Okay. So, I'll use positive 1 over J for that. Para nasa denominator itong J, para ma-multiply ko na siya kaga dito. Ito naman, uh, I'll use negative 1 over J for that. Negative 1 over J. Again, para nasa denominator yung J. Okay. Para ma-multiply ko kagad si J dito. Okay. So, ito yung magiging resulting ano, uh, expression. Okay. Uh, which now, okay, results to uh, this, ano, this expression. And is a complex expression. Okay. This is a complex uh, spectrum. Okay. That is neither real or imaginary. Okay? Again, wh why would it be a complex spectrum? Okay? Uh, we observe that your waveform does not have an even or odd symmetry. Okay? If there is no observable symmetry for your waveform uh, about uh, t equals 0, then we expect that your spectrum is complex. Again, uh, um, if WT is um, even symmetrical, okay, your spectrum, okay, your spectrum is real, okay, while if your um, waveform is uh, asymmetrical, your spectrum, okay, is purely imaginary. Okay. Pero since wala tayong no, wala tayong ano, wala tayong um Yeah, wala tayong nakikitang observable uh symmetry with your waveform. Okay. Ito na yung ano, ito na yung waveform niyo niyo. Okay. With this given these parameters. Okay. Again, your waveform is um E raised to negative t over t. Uh, cosine of I uh, sorry sine sine of uh, 2 pi f0 at uh, t 
Okay? 4 at uh, t greater than 0 and 0 okay, for uh, t less than 0. Yung ba yung given? Yeah. Pero hindi siya nag-reflect dun saan natin. So, siguro medyo nakalimutan ko lang to sa ano. So, dahil supposedly, dapat 0 siya dito. Eh. Okay. Supposedly, your, your, your signal is 0 here. So, I think, I, I, think uh, I made a mistake in, ano, in plotting this. Okay. Uh, which, I will correct in, ano, in uh, a later, ano, a later issue of this one. Okay. So, ayun. Uh, suppose this zero siya dito. So, magsisimula lang dapat yung waveform nyo uh, here. Dapat siya lang yung waveform nyo. E, uh, everything else here is, must be uh, zero. Okay. So, there. Now, um, Given the parameters t equals uh, t equals uh, two and f zero equals three, okay. Um, <clears throat> ito yung magiging resulting waveform niyo. And obviously, since dapat zero nga yung nasa kaliwang side nito, okay. Uh, there is no observable ano. There will be no observable um, symmetry for your uh, waveform signal. Okay. So therefore, kapag kaganon pag wala tayong, uh, if there is no observable symmetry for your signal, uh, it would, ano, it would be prudent for us to, ano, to expect that your, ano, your spectrum would return as complex. So, such as this one. Makikita natin ngayon na complex nga yung, ano natin, um, yung ating, uh, wave, uh, spectrum natin. Okay. And, by the way, this is ano ah, uh, uh, WF na, F na wa, not uh, WT. Okay. This is spectrum already. So, kung spectrum na to, dapat WF na siya. So, this is uh, WF. This is WF. Okay. So, there. Now, um, if you now take a look at the no, magnitude and, spa and, and phase spectra of um, of your waveform, you would now have this. Okay, and this. Okay. Now, um, observe that, ano, observe that uh, if you compare this to, ano, to the magnitude, magnitude spectra in the previous example, in, pre in, uh, in example number 5 earlier. Okay. Uh, you see that, ano, or you would remember na, wait. So, now we put, ano, we put the magnitude spectrum of the two, of uh, example 5 and example 6 side by side. Okay. So, um, although this is, ano, uh, this is, top, this is the spectrum. Okay. Uh, this is the spectrum for a uh, decaying exponential pulse. Okay. That is yung waveform nito is um simply e raised to negative t uh, for positive t and zero for negative t okay while ito kasi is ano ang waveform natin tukoy natin dito is uh the switch uh, the, ano, the scale the scale exponential uh with frequency translation or that is we multiply this with a sinusoid uh with a sinusoidal uh Waveform, okay. Um, dito nyo makikita actually yung ano, the, the effect of ano, the effect of um, what we call yung frequency translation, okay. That is yung multiplication nitong sinusoid component or factor na to, okay. Uh, as you can see, um, you have a ano, a set of non-zero, um, Frequency components around here. Okay, around this, ano. And that, when you multiply the waveform with a sinusoid, okay, you actually have to translate this spectrum by positive and negative uh, F0. Okay? So, in this case, kasi F0 is, ano, is 3. So, that's positive and negative 3. Kaya makita nyo ngayon, uh, since this is centered from z uh, at 0, at f equals 0, 
makita nyo ngayon na itong dalawang um, components na to. Okay. These are now ano, centered at plus or minus um, plus or minus 3 hertz. Okay. So, yun yung tinatawag yung frequency translation. Okay. So, there. So, yun na nga. Um, observe that the magnitude um, spectrum of, w of your waveform peaks at uh, plus or minus F0. Okay? And as stated previously, the waveform WT is essentially the exponential function multiplied by a sinusoidal function. Okay? So, the multiplication of the exponential uh, function okay, by a sinusoidal function will cause the frequencies okay, of the exponential function or an exponential waveform to be shifted okay, or translated by plus or minus F0. Okay? And that is the physical meaning of uh, the frequency translation uh, property of entry number 6. Actually, if you want to make it more, ano, more technical, ito, ito, ito rin yung tinatawag nating modulation. Okay? Uh, modulation kasi actually shifts your, ano, uh, one, one, uh, one thing that you do in, ano, in uh, modulation, or when you modulate a signal or a waveform, uh, you actually shift the frequency of that waveform to another frequency. Okay? And so, one way to do that is to actually multiply your waveform by a sinusoid. Okay? So that this would result. Magre-result siya sa shifting. Okay? If this is the original frequency uh, components of your, ano, of your uh, waveform, then this frequency components would be shifted by plus or minus um, F Fc. Okay? Where Fc is the frequency of the uh, sinusoid that uh, you use to multiply your signal width. Okay? So, kung gusto, na, kung gusto pa natin magpa, mas magpaka-technical in regard to this one. Okay? So, does it recall from example 5 that the magnitude spectrum of the exponential function uh, peaks at F0, at F equals 0? Observe now that the magnitude spectrum of um, E ratio negative T sine of 2 pi F0 T now peaks at these frequencies. Okay. So you would now observe the what we call in translation. Okay. So again, kung gusto nyo pong mas pagpaka-technical dyan, uh, aside from translation, th that is also called modulation. Okay. So uh, we will continue uh, the discussion on this uh, by uh, by now discussing two important um, functions or pseudo functions that are used in uh, in, anal in analysis of uh, of uh, waveforms in uh, communication systems, uh, but uh, but uh, these are uh, one of these is actually called a pseudo function because ano. Uh, they, they, this is not a real function per se. Okay? But yung concepto kasi, or but the concept of how it is defined and how it works is actually very useful okay? in extending uh, the, number one, the properties of your, ano, of your um, Fourier transform, and number two, uh, the, ano, the, how you define your signal or how you define your waveform. So we'll continue that by in the discussion uh, or by discussing Dirac delta function and the unit step function.